Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another podcast. I'm excited to have on today's show Justin Di Pasquale. He's the VP of Sales at Call Review, and it's so good to have Call Review represented on the show. Justin, what's new at Call Review? Brian, thanks. Glad to be here. Oh, it's an exciting time at Call Review. You know, we continue to uh, to help our dealers in these unprecedented times. And uh, I tell you what, I'm more encouraged by how I've seen dealers, you know, take control of their businesses by um, by just getting more efficient and better at what they do. So um, again, exciting times at Call Review. Glad to be here with you. Yeah. So COVID has forced dealers to reimagine retail, and you know. The first month or two was scary, uh, followed by unprecedented uh, sales success. Most dealers this summer into the early fall had uh, largest months, highest grossing months, sales records. As we get ready to close out the year, November has already started to see many dealers slow that momentum down. And everyone's starting to say it's time to get back to the basics. And I couldn't agree with that more. You know, Call Review has a slogan uh, developed by dealers for dealers. It's a part of your culture in DNA. Why is that important for the dealers who are listening today that they understand your DNA? You know, I, I think it's important because there, there's literally hundreds, if not thousands of, of, you know, widgets and software out there <clears throat> that dealers utilize to either make their business more efficient or more profitable or communicate with their customers. And, you know, unless you speak dealer, meaning unless you were born in, in that world, um, I think you have a little bit of a disadvantage to to understand what is really important to dealers. There's just so many things being thrown at them today that you talked about getting back to to the basics, you know, as as dealerships lean back their staffs and focused on the basics of selling cars and service and adapting to, you know, the ever-changing environment. I think what we were able to do is, is help those dealers understand that communicating with their customers over the phone or, you know, whatever method the, the customer you know preferred, whether it was texting or, or anything else, was a super important way to understand how the customers wanted to do business. And just understanding that from a dealer's perspective and making it simplistic and easy for them to be able to adapt and, and use our solution, I think is what gave us a leg up. Well, you know, for dealers who are listening to today's conversation, many of them may be thinking, yeah, call review, it's all about phone and monitoring the phone, scoring the calls. But dealers know that consumers are really multi-device, multi-channel communicators. They may be calling, they may be chatting, they may be texting. And one of the breakthroughs in your current release of the software is that regardless of whose chat company you use, and because you don't provide chat. And regardless of which texting platform the dealer may use, because you're not providing that, you can really absorb all of those conversations through phone calls, chats, and text, and keep a history of customer communication, which is something I even wasn't aware of. Tell the dealers a little bit more why the call review, multi channel communications, logging, scoring and alerting is so critical in today's retail environment? Well, it, it's critical because, there, as you just mentioned, there's a, a number of ways customers want to communicate with their dealers, right? Whether you're calling the service department, parts or sales, everyone wants to communicate just a little bit differently. And I will say, you know, 95% of, of, you know, sales leads happen or result in a phone call, right? But they may not have started there. That being said, there's all these different ways for a customer to reach out to a store. And we realized um, pretty early on that we need to be able to ingest all those different methods of communication into a platform. 
And, and I think it's important, like you mentioned, to say there's a bunch of companies out there doing chat and, and, and doing texting solutions, right? And we understand that. Dealers, you know, want to be able to have the flexibility to use um, various tools because, you know, they're worried about integration with their CRM or their DMS. And, and you know, the smart dealers are trying to reduce the, the, um, the number of, of uh, partners that they use just for efficiency sake. So we understood early on that we needed to be able to take all those various um, companies and methods of communication and put them into one platform so we can see you know that that caller journey or that caller or that communication journey of that customer in one place to identify where the customer came from how was the call or the chat handled what was the outcome did we have a missed opportunity Right? Did something happen in that conversation we, that we missed an opportunity? We measure sentiment. Was there a revenue generating opportunity that we missed? And we got to get that alert proactively to a manager or someone that can pick up the phone or pick up their, you know, their uh, their mobile device, text the customer, reach out to the customer, and find out what we can do to earn that customer's business or to keep the customer happy. Well, you know, Justin. I want to dive into that a little bit more because dealers are burnt out on sales pitches. They're burnt out on false promises. They're burnt out on the people who say they want to help them sell more cars, but really bring in technology or solutions that are too cumbersome. I love the fact that your customers and your platform really have a very quick turnaround time, meaning a dealer who implements call review can see in that first month a measurable and significant increase in, for example, appointment set rate. What what would a dealer see? Someone who has not been using call scoring, has not been really monitoring what's happening with all of their sales opportunities. They install call review after 30 days, what are your clients seeing that would perk the ears of the general managers listening to today's show? Uh, that's a good question. I'll, I'll, I'll actually take a case study that, that we just did for, um, for a dealer group that actually purchased three stores um, in the middle of summer. So, you know, when they came on board with us, they, they bought these stores and, and we took a benchmark of where the stores were at. Again, three dealerships. One of the dealerships had a 44% uh, appointment rate in June, a 50% appointment rate in June, and the third dealership had a 25% appointment rate. Just horrible, right? They installed call review, right? And we were able to, within, within one month, right? By the end of that first month, the first dealership that had a 44% appointment rate went to 60. The second dealership went from 50 to 69. Wow. And the last dealership, which had a long way to go, went from 25 to 59%. And, and so you say, that's incredible. What, what secret sauce? Look, the, the, the biggest impact was the fact that we were able to cut down or almost eliminate the number of missed calls or abandoned calls. It would blow your mind, just blow your mind if I told you that 32% of all calls. Now, again, I'm not just taking the average for these three stores. That's, that's the average of all of our customers, 32% are either not answered or abandoned. 32% of customers that call into a store in a given month do not talk to a live person because they either give up because they go down a phone tree or they end up in voicemail and they don't want to leave a voicemail, right? Because yes. not many people listen to their voicemails. So when you fix that problem and, and you get a huge bump, right? We address that problem literally the first day we go live. The second thing is we take the opportunity. If we talk to the customer and the conversation didn't go well, look, we can't listen. We can't expect dealers to listen to all these calls. It's just not possible. It's inefficient. What we need to be able to do is use AI and human summarizations and, and be able to summarize these calls and create automated alerts. So for the, whether it's a sales opportunity or a service opportunity or parts opportunity, put that missed opportunity into the hands of a person, a manager who can make a decision to say, I need to reach back out to this customer. I need to call them. I need to text them and find out what we can do to save or earn their business. And if you do that quickly, you're going to create an impact for the store right away. You know, Justin, I'm going to give uh, some practical experience as well. There's a number of dealers 
who are listening to today know like, man, I have high turnover the BDC. I'm not happy with our lead response. I'm not happy with our appointments. And I here's what I hear them say. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to wait to get call review until I get a stable staff in. And, and I tell them, no, if you know you have a problem with appointment setting, if you know you have a problem with connecting sales opportunities with sales associates, um, you don't wait for the people. Here's the reason why. Uh, the alerts that you generate can be escalated to sales managers, desk managers, even the general manager, so that while the BDC or while the internet department or while HR is trying to find these you know, new dedicated team members, at least out of the calls that come in, the ones that are sales opportunities or missed opportunities can be summarized, um, kind of condensed into an action list. And it, isn't that the beauty of it, Justin, whether they're going through stress because of loss of uh, employees, it's a new point they just acquired, they have no idea what's going on, or there are what they think is a well-run shop and they want to see if there's still holes. There's absolutely no reason for someone not to use technology to see if there's some low-hanging fruit that's just falling through the cracks. You're absolutely spot on on that. Don't wait until you have this utopia of, of a staff because quite honestly, I, those rarely exist, right? You're never gonna get to that you know, full staff. We've got the perfect staff that knows, they all know how to handle an incoming you know, phone call and how to do an outbound phone call. You're, you need to identify where the problems are so you can start to address them, right? The great thing about our our inbound and our outbound you know monitoring platform is we uncover those, we alert you, so that way you can recover those opportunities. But the second part of that is okay. So we've got a learning opportunity for either the BDC staff or a specific you know group of salespeople, or you know even an, an advisor, a service advisor, or a parts person. Now what do we do? All right, we can have a constructive conversation with facts with that individual to be able to train them to a different way to be able to handle the uh, the phone call and create a better outcome. You know, you can't, like I said, you can't listen to the thousands of calls that come into a dealership, but you know, I bet you can listen to, you know, maybe a dozen or two a day and not even the whole phone call, just identify in the two or three minute conversations where the 15 seconds where the sentiment of this went from good to bad and let's listen to that and figure out what can we do to create a better outcome because the conversation needs to change. That's what I think is really critical is, is changing the behavior um, of our staff to be able to handle our customers' needs and, and doing that efficiently. You know, one dealer I visited and, and they were a call review customer. And what I loved about them is they took a good call and a bad call every morning meeting. And they praised someone who handled objections properly, you know, set appointment. And then they played a call that wasn't handled properly. And they asked the team, hey, what could have been done differently here? And I will tell you that uh, a manager, as you mentioned, has a lot on their plate. They can't go through even 100 calls to try to find a good one and a bad one. But your system does that perfectly. And so I want to encourage dealers also making morning meetings more impactful in your bottom line means that you're using the morning meetings to fix skills, enhance skills and strategy to handle all the sales opportunities. And every dealer knows this, that there are dozens of opportunities per day, unless you're a really small store that fall through the cracks. So why wouldn't you identify them, use them as training opportunities, and of course, dealers who run their business by the numbers know that a few extra sales every week at the end of the year makes a huge, huge difference. So Justin, one of the areas that I wanna address, because you've done a good job in dealing with this, is that uh, DNI, Dynamic Number Insertion, on the website allows your dashboard to tell dealers whether it was a Google ad or a Facebook ad or Google My Business or you know some other referral source, uh, Tier 2 or Tier 1, uh, that came to the website and generated a call. But 
that's because you install software on the website. And historically, website vendors drop code like call review or any other code. And it's always been a frustration to dealers. You know, maybe they find out two or three weeks later, oh, all my call tracking by campaign source is gone. You know, I was still getting the calls. I just didn't know which campaign. I love the fact that you're proactively monitoring that. Would you speak a little bit to that? Because dealers don't have time to look at Google Analytics every day. No, they they absolutely don't, and, and nor should they, by the way. So, you know, we developed a, a, a platform to ingest, you know, the Google Analytics data, right? So that way the, the dealer didn't have to have the heavy lift of understanding, okay, what do they need to, to monitor and what do they need to tweak and, and do they need to constantly look at it? So we developed this platform to ingest the data and map it to um, our dashboard to be able to say, okay, here are all our opportunities. <clears throat> it's session-based, right? So it's specific to that customer. So whether that customer comes back later that day, we know it's that customer and we can tr track that, that journey and identify the outcome of that customer, either eventually picking up the phone and calling, or maybe they have a, a chat session with someone at the store or a third party. We identify that and get better results from advertising spend because we know what's working and, and what isn't working from a conversion perspective. You know, it's not just about, you know, how many, you know, VDPs we have or, or, or how many page views we have. It really is about, you know, the engagement with the customer, what the outcome of that is in the store. I don't want to just know my, my conversion. I want to know the cost per conversion. I want to, I need to get granular, but but I can't go looking for the data. I want to go to one place to see a high level overview so I can have better conversations. And, and I'm, I'm not saying this because we want to be able to, to use this information to necessarily hammer our digital partner. We want to be able to use it so we can help them spend our money more effectively, right? That's really the, the purpose of this. And, and that's what dealers want. They, they want to know, hey, if I'm spending X amount of dollars on Facebook, what are the total sales opportunities generated via lead forms, phone calls, chats, or texts? You know, Justin, another thing that I noticed through reading some industry periodicals is that during COVID, Mobile traffic was down. Desktop traffic was higher. Makes sense. More people were working from home and still work from home, which means more desktop phone calls were going on, meaning people were on their computer searching for cars at a dealer, sees the phone number at the top of the site and calls that number from their cell phone. And that means that during COVID, the increase in desktop calls should have been going up. Is that what you were seeing? Um, you know, was, was I reading the right information? It would make sense to me, but you guys see it better than I. Yes, you're absolutely right. So pre-COVID, right, 80% of the inbound leads uh, came from a phone call, right? During COVID, it went up to 88%, all right, 88%. So that's a pretty dramatic increase. That's right. And, and call it. It, it was just incredible. And I think that's because you said the you know, people's lives changed and how they interacted, how they did business, how they work changed. And um, it, it created that type of output where the phones even became more important. And then you you take that and realize that most dealerships reduce their staffs or send some of their staffs home and they've got even less people handling more phone calls. Right. Mm -hmm. Which yes. creates a problem. Right. That, that efficiency of we've got more business that we can handle right now and we're not probably handling those calls or those opportunities as effectively as we could. It wasn't just in the, in the sales department. It was in the service department too, sure. right? Sure. Sure. And, and one of the things I want to just get a little technical with, a little geeky with dealers, you know, most dealers have an event on their Google analytics goals called mobile click the call. Now, all it, all it says is that someone was on a mobile device and clicked to call. Whether the call was connected or not, Google Analytics does not know. The point I wanted to make, and thank you for confirming that data, is that desktop calls are not tracked in Google Analytics and you need DNI. So if you say during COVID, hey, 30% of all my phone calls are coming from non-mobile devices, that means you're missing 30% of your conversions, which can completely throw off your return on ad spend calculations. So I just want to let dealers know 
that having DNI, even if you say, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about coal scoring. I don't know why you would. Uh, uh, our guys and gals handle the phone perfectly. Uh, no, they don't. But even if you thought you were living in, you know, a false planet, um, absolutely the desktop calls need to be tracked. And they need to be tracked by a third-party tool like Call Review. And, and I think that dealers... Uh, now that you know there's some new lockdown suggestions going on as we're running into November, December peak periods, um, we can't miss out that desktop phone calls, people coming to the website and just calling the number at the top, not clicking, but calling on their phone. All of those conversions are being lost unless you have a technology like Call Review. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned a really good point there in that, that Google Analytics, they pick up when somebody actually clicks on the number. But how many times have you, have you been on your phone and accidentally clicked a number and didn't actually call the dealership? Right. right. Oh, the, the piece that, that's missing there is, did the person actually talk to somebody at the dealership? Did a call actually get placed to the dealership? We pick that information up because guess what? We're monitoring all the calls. We have numbers that say as much as 30% of that traffic that shows a click to call is actually false based yeah. upon our data. Well, and that's why um, that mobile click to call can be a false friend and uh, dealers will get the truth of how many of those calls actually connected. And there's also, you know, I won't go into it. That's another rant, but there are bots and people whose moral compass isn't pointing north that actually will uh, generate clicks on those mobile click the calls just to inflate conversion to make themselves look good. So, Justin, uh, Call Review is involved in the upcoming Automotive Analytics and Attribution Summit. And the people who attend that conference not only get three days of amazing workshops, panels, and keynotes, but all the content's going to be online until the end of January. And you're going to be doing a workshop there. Is that correct? That is correct. I, I am looking forward to it. And what are you going to be covering? What what makes it a valuable investment of a dealer's time to attend your workshop? You know, again, I think we talk about the the ever changing ways that uh, customers want to communicate with the with the dealership and and how we need to constantly adapt. Um, you know, I think the the best thing that we can do um, as dealers is continue to be humble and continue to learn. Um, you know, when I was out traveling and visiting dealers, you know, some of the best ideas and the best enhancements that we made in our in our software and our platform, um, whether I was working for Call Review or, or anyone else, came from the dealers, right? They're the ones that are the feet on the street, the front line of interacting with customers and trying to figure out a better way. So, you know, as, as you go out to the open market and say, okay, we'll, I want that continuous improvement of what can I learn this week or, or, or today? What can I do to change or modify my process um, in order to create a better outcome, in order to be able to create a better customer experience, which creates a loyal customer, could create a customer for life, right? I think what dealers can learn um, by broadening their purview outside of what they know today, I think will help ad them adapt for the uncertainty of the future because there's one thing that's inevitable is it will continue to change that's absolutely correct and i know that every year that i've attended a call review workshop the the data that you guys see the insights that you have are really breathtaking justin if somebody wanted to get a demonstration of call review what's the best way to reach out and book that demo Super easy. You can go on social media, LinkedIn. Easiest way is probably just go to our website at callreview.com, click on request a demo. It takes 15 to 20 minutes. It's super simple. Our, our tools, um, they're not complicated. They're simple um, and they create impact super quick. Great. Well, for the dealers that are listening, let me summarize why I believe call review technology has to be part of a dealer's arsenal for basic blocking, tackling, to make sure that sales opportunities are not slipping through the cracks. And I'll, I'll re restate what I said before. You may be buying a new point. This is the best tool to see what the current sales process looks like and 
where the holes are. If you having high turnover in your internet department, this is absolutely needed. Even though you're a successful dealer, high turnover in the internet department means balls are being dropped and you need to know which balls are being dropped and how to resolve them the same day. In, in fact, you could resolve them within minutes of a missed call or a broken uh, sales experience. And third, you may be an excellent operator, top in class, but when you heard the lift that you could get in set appointments through training, reporting, and insights, even a 5 to 10% increase, not a 25 or 30% increase, a 5 or 10% appointment uh, increase would be revolutionary and bought in by any dealer. So take advantage of Justin's opportunity to get a demo. Also, if you want to really interact with the team at Call Review, make sure you attend the workshop at the AAA Summit. And if you haven't registered, well, please get over to AutomotiveAttributionSummit.com. Get your team registered. The conference is November 16th, 17th, and 18th, but all of the keynotes, the panels, the workshops will be online for your replay and coaching and internal training until the end of January. So one ticket is like getting a masterclass in automotive retailing. And if this is the first time you're listening to one of my podcasts, you should know that each week I interview thought leaders and industry disruptors who are helping dealers make the most of the retail opportunities in their local market. There are dozens of interviews that you can listen to on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, or you can go to brianpash.libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. That's the native player for our podcast. Justin, I really appreciate your passion for the dealer and your platform. Are you excited for AAS in just a few days? I absolutely am, Brian. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Well, thanks for coming on the show. And I want to thank everyone who's listening. This is part of a series on the road to the AAA Summit. Make sure you listen to the other podcasts for speakers and panelists that are going to make this conference rock with relevant content to help dealers sell more cars in a digital age. Thank you for listening, and we'll catch you again in an upcoming podcast.